I think deep down we all want to own a 50 Fathoms. Historical significance doesn't even begin to describe it. Mechanical significance and the influence that this watch had in the development of what dive watches are seen as today. It's huge. It's massive. I mean, it's words can't express it. In the 1950s and 60s, Blancpain just kept hitting those home runs. Nineteen fifty three was a very important year in the development of the dive watch. The watches that most of us are accustomed to seeing today, you know, with plots, with rotating bezels. But as most of us also know, Panerai in the nineteen thirties was the brand to first take dive watches seriously. By the nineteen forties we started seeing the use of rotating bezels in a more practical sense, used on pilot watches of all things, like the Omega or the Longines Weems six B variant that was issued to the RAF as early as nineteen forty. And by the 1950s, for the first time, we started seeing these characteristics come together. 1953, we saw the debut of three extremely influential dive watches, being the Zodiac Seawolf, the Rolex Submariner, and the Blancpain 50 Fathoms. All of these pieces deserve commendation. And it's interesting to think that this year being 2023, 70th anniversary of all three of these models, I guarantee that we are going to see some interesting evolutions of each. I'm throwing in a dive pun here, don't hold your breath, but we might even see a anniversary Submariner this year. And who knows what it could look like? It could reference the 6538 or implement some use of green on its dial. That's a question for another time. Today we're talking about what is arguably one of the most influential dive watches in history. And that is the 50 Fathoms. Why is this watch so special? I'm not going to give you a history lesson. What I will do is pin a comment at the bottom of this video, which is going to give you a 30 minute long documentary and historical overview of this watch. And I think it is without question one of the best historical documentations that a watch brand has ever done about itself. And I say that because it's full of passion. The people behind it making this have such a love for the history and what the 50 Fathoms means to them. As far as even hearing the chief creator and the CEO's input around this piece. The cliff notes is that this watch really defined the idea of an oversized watch. It defined the use of O-ring gasket seal for the case back. It was also at the forefront of creating a telescopic crown system and gasket technology that would allow for it to be hermetically sealed. And then of course it's the history of this watch being issued to militaries all across Europe, even as far out as the United States. And this happened between the 1950s and the 1960s. To mark this special occasion, the 70th anniversary, well, Blancpain has given us a limited edition. What a surprise. Three series of watches, 70 watches in each series, marking the 70th anniversary. So that equals 210 total. And these models will be shared across America, Europe, the Middle East, and Asia. Now, what I find most interesting about this release, yes, it's a gorgeous watch. We will look at its details, but it copies almost word for word the 50th anniversary 50 Fathoms that was produced 20 years ago. 2003 was a very important year for Blancpain because it was the rebirth of the 50 Fathoms in the configuration that we know today. Not only did it coincide with the 50th anniversary of the original watch, but it also allowed for the brand to, for the first time, give us the modern size. And with the 45mm size and the new chassis, the whole new configuration, we also saw a limited release of, I'm going to call them the series collection of pieces. Marking the 50th anniversary of the 50 Fathoms also with the series number written underneath. Now at first glance, if we were to compare the 50 to the 70 side by side, you wouldn't notice much of a difference, and frankly there hasn't been much of a change. The first detail that stands out the most is that the handset has been changed, and the surrounds used between the markers and the plots are missing. The only real obvious changes to this model now is the markations on the bezel, the 0 to 15 we now see markers throughout, as well as the fact that this piece now does not come on a bracelet like it did originally, but instead on a nylon strap. And then of course the size difference. As far as I know, the 50th anniversary was actually 40 millimeters in diameter, where this new one is 42 millimeters. All in all, these two models look exactly the same, and I think it was done for a reason. If it ain't broke, why fix it? It's been 20 years since the 50th anniversary, and I'm sure many people have forgotten it by now. Looking at the details of these watches, they are absolutely beautiful. I do like the modern configuration of these watches. Do in many ways wish they did have some further callbacks to the original designs without crown guards and some of those details. But the sunbrushed finish on the dial, the sapphire capped bezel, the beautiful loom, the size, the space, proportions, the use of typeface and text, very nicely balanced. 42 millimeters is a great contemporary dive watch size, and I don't think you can get much better than this. So my honest opinion about this watch, I think it looks beautiful. I think it does call back to the original in many ways. 
The use of pencil hands instead of the typical oversized gladius hands is a nice touch. And the size increase was done on purpose from 40 to 42 because it now boasts a new in-house caliber with like a 100 hour power reserve. All that said though, unfortunately, I think this watch is cutting corners. You know, they might be using proprietary loom, maybe even ceramic inserts for the loom plots, but without surrounds, it loses that luxurious feel that you want out of a Blanc Palm Diver. The complete lack of bracelet with a watch of this price, believe it or not, but the 50th actually also came with a rubber strap configuration. This one favoring a nylon strap is a little bit of a step back. As for the offset date window complication, I know that there are people on both sides that love and detest it. I kind of like it the way it is out of the way. But here's the issue, and I've made a video about the subject not a few months ago about the problems and success of Blancpain as a company. Their dive watches, the ones that we as enthusiasts truly want are their limited edition pieces because they are perfectly sized, because they have amazing inspirations, they use alternative materials, and some of the most beautiful dial configurations of any dive watch. But we can't get any of these because they are produced in batches of 250 models if we're lucky. I can see the argument from both sides. One hand, they keep them limited in order to keep the interest constantly flowing. Every single year, limited edition release models, and these pieces will sell. They will disappear off the shelves within a matter of seconds. But then at the same time, you have such a rich history of designs and incredible innovations. Why not make these watches more available to the public? That's what I can't seem to fathom. <laughs> I just think I used that exact same pun in the last video. <laughs> These are exceptionally great watches with amazing histories. Blancpain is one of the best watchmakers around today. Now, as enthusiasts, especially dive watch enthusiasts, the 50 Fathoms is one of those go-to watches that many of us strive for to own one day. Does that make any grammatical sense? Probably doesn't, but I'm keeping it in anyway. And what's keeping us behind and not allowing us to own them is that, well, we can't afford them, they're pretty expensive, but also the fact that they are hid behind the 300 or so models that are released in a limited number. And I just so wish that Blancpain was willing to make these kinds of watches mainstream. 42 millimeters in size, beautiful configuration, simple designs, maybe calling back to some of their early pieces. Now you and I both know that if that was to happen, these watches would be very hard to find, even still, because they would sell out so fast. You know, the end result would be the same, actually, now that I think of it, because limited supply, increased demand, these watches will still be very pricey on the grey market. Watches and their popularity, I mean, it's a cyclical process at this point. Regardless of all of that, though, the simple Arabics on the dial, the batons that aren't pointed but are rectangular, the pencil handset, the larger-than-average sapphire-capped bezel and a digestible size for this watch to be on the wrist, makes it a winner. No doubt that these are probably all sold out already and we'll have to wait another five years to see them again for the 75th anniversary. For all of us naysayers, for those of us who wish that these watches weren't limited editions, the design execution of these divers is flawless.